Hello, dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ and everyone who is following this program. Thank you for sharing, commenting, subscribing, liking and sharing, calling, uh, inviting friends to this program. I'm very, very much blessed. And today I come to you uh, with a question from a Muslim. Uh, it's, it's not a question, but that's his idea, his understanding. Um, let us let's 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 endeavor and to understand what the Bible says. Um, so uh, we can also ask a question: What's the the importance of having Jesus? What what do you get when you have Jesus? Or what are you gonna miss if you if you don't have Jesus, Jesus Christ? What is what what is that? I mean, this is very 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 important and a life changing uh, topic. And so where did Jesus say, I will die for the sins of the other people? That's Abdul's question. The question from Abdul says, where did Jesus say, I will die for the sins of other people? Let's go and see. It's more than that. Uh, here is uh, Mr. Uh, Abdul um, Benazir ben Zaman. Zaman, crucifixion ca cannot wipe sins of anyone cannot wipe out clean it cannot cleanse anybody crucifixion where did, did Yeshua said I will uh, he's using Yeshua is in Hebrew uh, maybe him he, he may be from Israel a Muslim uh, where did Yeshua said I will die on cross on cross for everyone's sins and where it is said that God will accept dying on the cross as a sacrifice acceptable for the everyone's sins salvation cannot be achieved so cheaply their high price needs to be paid. Well, that's, 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 that's a great point. Which Yeshua never paid cause, he never knew I, I, about it. He never knew about it. Okay, this is the topic of uh, Abdul. Abdul is asking, uh, it requires a great sacrifice, a great, um, uh, great point to pay for the sin of the world. But, you know, if we consider uh, Id al hada is the one as a day of sacrifice. Muslims you now buy uh, from different parts of the world. They buy sheep and goat and camel and sacrifice in the day of sacrifice in Id al hada And now, they, what do they do that? Because they believe that, the, that Allah will accept their sacrifice. And now they are, uh, he is asking, he didn't ask the question for that. Actually, I have this uh, thing, this understanding. I know the Bible very well, though I never read it. This is <laughs> this is uh, the Muslims, you know. Muslims are like that. They are not allowed to read the Bible. They cannot read the Bible. They can't understand the Bible. They just receive a verse or get a twisted verse from their teachers, and they try to ask you about that, and then say it again and again and again and again and again and again, day and night. That's what the nature of Muslims. They do not have the liberty or the right to read the book. The Hindu can read the, the Bible. The Buddhist can read the Bible. Who's going to kill him for reading that? Uh, or or any uh, other, uh, anybody else can read the Bible. The atheist can read the Bible. They have the right. The only person who do not have the right to read the Bible is a Muslim. A Muslim cannot read the Bible. But he knows the Bible than anybody else. He claims to know. He claims to know the Bible than anybody else. Now, that's what he's, he's saying now. Crucifixion cannot wipe sins of anyone. Where did Yeshua say, I will die for, on the cross for everyone's sins? And where is it said that, that God will accept dying on the cross, um, as a sacrifice acceptable for everyone's sins? Salvation cannot be achieved so cheaply, so cheaply. So, the coming and the dying of Jesus Christ is cheap on the eyes of this poor Muslim. On the eyes of Abdul, that is cheap. Dear high price needs to be paid. All right, Eid al hada high price to be needed to be paid. All right, let us go, let's go, let's go, let's go and see mm, high price. Okay, the sacrifice of El Al Hada. 
uh, is, is that's a great one for the Muslims. <laughs> this sacrifice, this sacrifice, this camel, this one, the hen, the god, and this one. This is much, much, much glorious or high priced than the blood of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How poor is a human being? How poor are these Muslims? So the Shah is cutting this pig. Ha uh ha. -huh. The camel, the camel, the donkey, and that one is great sacrifice for you. Now, which it was surpasses, surpasses the sacrifice of Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus, how wonderful it is. How wonderful it is to believe in you and to know you than to be blinded with the religion of this world, the darkness of this world. So let's go to the point. What is Jesus? I mean, what is Jesus' importance for us? Why did Jesus come into this world? Now, before that, let me take you to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, is a suffering servant is called, as the book of Isaiah 53. 53. Um, Surely he has borne our griefs, it's about Jesus, and carried our sorrows, is a, as a, a prophetic uh, about Jesus. Uh, in, in 700 years before the coming of Jesus, it was prophesied precisely, correctly, as it is happens in the book of Isaiah. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, as if we was you know, destroyed or uh, of God, because he was people say, you know, oh, he was punished, he was punished by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for what? For our transgression, for our sins, for our guilt, for our uh, misbehaving before God. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are all healed. You see? The stripes of Jesus the stripes that he had on the cross was mentioned seven, seven, more than 700 years before the coming of the Lord Jesus. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We all, like Muslims, Muslims are like astray, like sheep, who, who, know, who do not know where to go. They just are following. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone on to his own way his own religion, his own way, his own lifestyle, not knowing where he's going, not knowing the destination, not knowing what will happen at the end of the day, not knowing what is gonna, God is gonna require him or her at the end of life. Just go and go and go. That's what the Bible says. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all, all our burden. All our sin was upon sins were upon Jesus Christ. So this is it. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He sprout as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opens not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and was uh, who shall declare his generation, for he was cut off. He was cut off. He was cut off, man. He was died. He died out of the land of the living. You see the punishment out of the land of the living. Why? Because he's gonna put us back to the land of the living. He conquered us. Muhammad did not conquer. Rishna did not conquer. Nobody has conquered death. Everybody lives in the grave. But Jesus Christ was died and then was cut from the land of the living for, but he uh, re, he, he conquered us and gave us everlasting life. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He was stricken for the... Look, iniquity, sin, transgression, all these are synonyms. How we are wicked. How we became wicked before God. No man, no man, no man is righteous. We'll, we'll go back to Isaiah. But Jesus suffered a lot for, 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 for us, for us. For, uh, for for you and for me, and the Bible says, um, Jesus said himself, he says in Matthew 20, uh, 20 verse twenty eight. Um, let me go to the King James. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, he didn't come to be ministered. 
not to be servant. He didn't need a servant. Jesus Christ didn't need a servant. It was not like Muhammad. Well, no, no, please don't compare him. It's a shameful thing to compare Jesus Christ to that evil false prophet. But to minister and to give his life as a ransom for money. What does it mean? For many people, ransom means he's going to give his life so that, as Isaiah said, he's going to redeem his, redeem his people. A ransom for their sins. For the sin of the world. So if you believe in Jesus Christ and say, Lord, cleanse me, clean my heart, wash me, wash my heart, mind, and everything totally, and possess me, and let your spirit dwell in me, give me everlasting life, he will give it to you. He will, he will give it to you. So Jesus, what did he say? Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as ransom for money. Or money. So, will you believe in him? Will you believe Jesus? Oh, where did he say? Uh, this is the book. Matthew 20, verse 28, my friend. Abdul, Matthew 20, verse 28. Let's go to some part and then I'm going to finish. Because we have some other days we are going to uh, uh, explore about uh, Jesus. Um, um, about Jesus coming to this world and... Uh, uh, taking care of for us. Matthew, Matthew, you can eat Matthew 18. Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that you despise not of these little ones. His, Jesus is telling his disciples, do not hate, do not undermine these little children. These little children, do not undermine them. Do not despise them because of this littleness. Do not look them down for the little children. This is our Jesus. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. These little children. Jesus Christ cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for me. He cares for the little ones. Jesus Christ cares for the little ones. He doesn't want them to be lost. He came to redeem the little one. And then he gives them a, a, a parable. A parable 99 plus. One. Uh, Matthew 12, uh, 18, 12. How think he, how do you think, if a man have hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, Okay, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, if lost one of the sheep, does he not leave the ninety and nine, and goes into the mountains, and seeks the, which, which is gone astray, the lost one? He's going to go around, search and search, search and search, until he finds the lost sheep. And if, if, if so be, uh, if, if uh, and if so be that he find it verily, I say unto you, he rejoices more of the, the sheep than of the ninety-nine which went, which went not astray. So, whenever he finds that sheep, he will carry and bring it home, and he will be happy on that the found sheep than the ninety-nine, because ninety-nine were there. So, look how he cares. Jesus cares for each one of you, each one of us. But we have to hear. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. It is not the Father, the will of the Father, the will of Jesus, the will of the Holy Spirit, that you from India, you from Pakistan, you from America, you from Israel, you from any part of the world, and me who live in America will be lost. He doesn't want that. No. So that's why, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, 16. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, 16. What is the language? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So Jesus Christ came to give us everlasting life, to free us from the dominion of the devil. The devil likes religion. Jesus is not religion. Jesus is not religion. 
has nothing to do with the religion. Believing with Jesus is a, a, a relationship, a father and son relationship. If you believe Jesus is your father, a father in essence who redeems your soul, your, your being and transforms you from the kingdom of the devil, the darkness into the kingdom of light so that you live forever with God, with the angels, where, and with the saints of God in the kingdom of God, shining like the morning star. Yes, Jesus Christ came to save the world. The world. So, I invite you, Abdul, to believe in Jesus. To believe in Jesus. His sacrifice is the precious one. The, nothing can be compared to his sacrifice because his blood Great. He's great. Amazing. You don't know the mystery of the blood of Jesus unless you open your eyes and read his book and pray for God to open your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears and give us, give us you understanding of the gospel. Yes, this is part one and we'll continue uh, in the coming days. Uh, until we meet in another program, may the Lord richly bless you. Bye-bye.